Thank you. Um, we're grateful to have uh, Gerald Nelson, Jerry Nelson, here to speak to us today. Um, his wife, Zita Nelson, will be introducing him in just a moment, but uh, let me just tell you a little bit of, about her. She, she actually has a background in, uh, raised near Vancouver, Washington, convert to the church, uh, graduated from BYU, though as a four-year RN, and she practiced as a nurse in, I think, three different states. Um, for the last 10 years, she was working with LDS Hospital, where she met and practiced, uh, pardon me, where she managed a part-time children's literacy program in Salt Lake City as well, working with children who read below grade level. The after-school program partnered uh, with Salt Lake County and used computer labs in four Salt Lake County community centers. Uh, if I also have it right, I believe both of you have worked with the county prison system at, um, as advisors there. My wife and I did that shortly before coming here, as well as at the boys' prison, so I know a little bit what you've been doing there. Um, she has served as both a, in her ward young women's president and as a ward relief society president. They have four children and 12 wonderful grandchildren. So I'll turn the time over to Sister Nelson, Sister Nelson to introduce her husband, Jerry, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from him in just after her introduction. Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, just a little bit about my husband. He's a native Utahn, was born and raised in Salt Lake City. Uh, he served his original mission in Frankfurt, Germany. He refers that to that as a real mission. There was no MTC, and he went for three years. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a very long one. Uh, upon graduating from the University of Utah, we went to North Carolina State, where he uh, received his PhD in economics. As far as his business career goes, he was a, uh, worked in um, the business field and worked with uh, Fortune 500 companies for several years. After that, he has worked even more years as a consulting to several different industries, the telecommunications, the roller coaster, furniture, and there was one other which I have forgotten. Um, <coughs> He has been an adjunct professor at BYU Provo for 10 years. He spent one year as mentor in residence there. And probably uh, he also um, he taught in the Marriott School of Business. He was a faculty advisor to the business plan competition for three years and enjoyed that very much. Um, and as far as our church service, uh, we are con currently serving as addiction recovery missionaries. Uh, he has been a bishop, a stake high councilman. Um, so with that, here's Jerry. My wife's aloha was a little weak. Aloha. Aloha. It's a little better, I like that. It's always a joy to come here and uh, be with you students. The last time I was on campus was like in 2004 or 2005 where we came over and helped judge the business plan competition. That was a lot of fun. I remember one business idea that came out of that was a towelie. I should have brought my towelie. Someone made a pair of shorts out of a towel. You could then use, uh, you could wear to the beach and then use it as a towel when you were done swimming. And, uh, uh, so, uh, so I have a little bit of history here. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Um, what I've decided to do today is to give you some, uh, some idea of successful businesses that have been started by students. Uh, for 10 years, I've been mentoring students at BYU who wanted to start their own business. And uh, actually, some of those ideas have turned into very successful businesses. Um, every semester at BYU, 
uh, when I was mentoring, I would see roughly 90 new students. Those students fell into three categories. One was an idea. The second category was an idea, but some work having worked on the product and moved it along a bit. And the third category was someone who had already made a sale. Big deal. If you make a sale, that's, uh, you're on your way. So it was 55% had just an idea, 25% had done a little bit of work, and it was the 20% left over that were really fun to work with. Well, I want to tell you about three of those students uh, today because we talk about getting the business started and how to do that, but often we don't see the results of what's happened. So I have three successful businesses in three different areas that I want to tell you about. Um, before I get into that, though, I want to mention uh, Garrett G. I believe he was here and spoke to you a couple weeks ago. Um, Garrett came to see me a few times in 2010, the fall of 2010. Um, I didn't understand his idea. I didn't know what a QR code was. Um, but what I could tell was that he was too busy studying, working on his app, and trying to sell it, and trying to play soccer every day. And he's managed to do a lot of that and, uh, uh, and be very successful. I'll come back to that in, in a few minutes. But first, I want to start with, uh, with these three businesses. So if I can get everything working right. OK, cool. I picked three different industries, uh, three different kinds of businesses that you might think about starting. One's manufacturing. One is retail, and the final one is a service business. Each one of those have different uh, characteristics and require different kinds of financing and different kinds of dedication. So I thought that would be a good, uh, good place to start. So, um, ooh, it even works cool. So I'm going to start with a company called Rockwell. Rockwell was started by um, an engineering uh, graduate of BYU. He had gotten out of school for a year or two and wanted to start his own business, and so he just came back to school and showed up in my office, and uh, we chatted for a while. He had built a house. He wanted to put in, uh, in Utah, houses have basements. I don't, I'm not sure we have basements here, but, but they have, in Utah, they have those ugly corrugated window wells. You're in the basement, you look out the basement window, and it's just yucky. He wanted to have a nice looking window well in his basement, and he couldn't find one in the marketplace, so he decided that he was going to become a window well manufacturer. What do you say to a guy who comes into your office and says, I want to, I need $100,000 for a mold so I can build window wells? My rule was, I'll, I'll try to encourage you. <laughs> as, as dumb an idea as I thought it was, OK. I don't know where you're going to get $100,000, but good luck. Well, he, uh, he decided, he was so serious about it that he, he actually sold the new house he had just built. He moved his family, his wife and, and child, into his parents' basement, took the $35,000 from his selling his house, got his brother to put up another $25,000, bought a mold, and rented some space, and lo and behold, he was in business. Now, if you put yourself in that situation, you have no idea how hard the next three years are going to be. Because in a manufacturing business, you have to buy materials, pay labor, make a mold, then you have to sell the mold, then you have to ship it out, and then you get paid maybe 30 days later. It's a 60-day span before you get your money back. And, and all of the details that you've got to go through. Well, three years later, he came into my office. Um, he said, he said, Jer, um, I have this idea that I can go to a trade show in Las Vegas, and maybe I can get a lot of orders and new sales. And I asked him to put his financials on the board, and he said, I'm selling 75 window wells a month, and that's break even. And I'm paying down my, my debts, my, the money that I've borrowed, 
And, uh, but I think if I go to Vegas, I can double that. What do you tell him? <laughs> well, I'm older now, and, I, and, and having a strong balance sheet is a big deal. So I said, Vaughn, stay home. Don't do it. Run your business for six months, heal your balance sheet, then go to the show. What does Vaughn do? He goes to the show. He absolutely goes to the show. And what does he come home with? Double the amount of orders he had before the show. So what problems does that give him? He now needs another $100,000 to cover his working capital and another mold he's got to buy to fill all the orders. Well, so let me tell you a little bit about this. So let me go up here. Here's, uh, here's the facility that he rented in Provo, Utah. It has, uh, you can see the sign. Uh, let's see, oh, it's, it's this one, yeah. Rockwell, Rockwell. And it was a small garage sublet from another company. And he's got two molds in there. And he's banging out these window wells as best he can. Um, you can see some of the wells right here in front. He didn't have uh, enough storage inside for them all. And if I go forward to the next slide, that's what the well would look like installed in a home. He has a website that if you're ever interested in it, uh, Rockwell, rockwellinc.com. But uh, those have turned out to be very successful. So, and, and what's interesting is in the, in the housing recession in the United States in 2008, 9, and 10, his sales grew every year. Uh, this year he'll do over 4 million in sales, and next year, good shot doing five. Okay, so that's, that's one business that worked out very well. A lot of hard work, um, but he made it work. So let's, let's go to business number two, a retail business. OK. <clears throat> in like 2004, a student showed up in my office. He was a little bit heavy. He had just gotten back from a mission in Toronto, Canada. And he said, Jer, I really liked the hot dog stand streets in Chicago, in Toronto, and I want to do a hot dog stand on BYU's campus. Good idea? Hot dog. Hot dog. Another hot dog. Okay, well, um, his name was Jason Edwards, and I'm thinking, a lot of places to eat on campus, and uh, I don't know if, uh, anyway, I, I said, hey, Jason, go for it. Found just on the south side of campus a shack. I'm sorry, I don't have a, a, a copy of the shack itself in its original condition, but this is what it looks like today. Well, uh, it actually looks better in this picture than it does today because he's no longer working out of that shack. But it was gray and it had posters all over it for Hare Krishna and anybody else that uh, uh, people who are running for office would put their, their poster on it. And in uh, May of 2004, he found the owner of the shack, who talked him into letting him rent the shack for a year. The owner was so happy to have somebody actually pay them for the use of the shack that, that he gave him three months free rent. It was 300 bucks a month to rent the shack. So. Now he's got to fix it up so that he's got to paint it. He's got to uh, install all the cooking stuff inside, get the drink machine hooked up. The city of Provo wouldn't give him electricity until he was ready to launch his business and gotten a, a certificate that he could run a business there. So, so but he, he was working at the MTC he was going to school full time, and he was working on the shack after hours. It was dark. He needed, he didn't have any light, didn't have any electricity. He had to borrow a generator. So he's in there at 11 o'clock at night trying to fix this thing up. Finally gets it launched on, on June 15, 2004. And he makes it work. People are actually coming and, uh, oops, I didn't want to, let me, let me go back to, uh, this is what is, uh, this is what his uh, web page uh, looks like today. Mean dogs, nice buns. Uh, and the secret sauce. He has a secret sauce. 
he sold 75 to 100 hot dogs every day over the summer when the students were gone in 2004. The first week of class in the fall semester, the Daily Universe, got that right, uh, the Daily, Daily Universe ran an article about him in the paper, and in the next hour after the paper hit the streets, he sold more dogs than he had done in, on any day over the summer. He was swamped. He was so swamped, he dropped out of school and just struggling to keep the business going. And uh, he dropped out in the wrong way. He couldn't get back into school in January when he thought he could. It took him a full year to get back in, into school. Uh, part of the reason he got back into school was he married the Entrepreneurial Center director's daughter. <laughs> which helped him a lot. <laughs> so today, uh, Jason has left the shack. No longer is he in the shack, but there is a building that is, you know, that's his, his van that he now has, and, and there's a building right here that he is now selling hot dogs out of. He's opened two more locations, and he is trying to get locations for two more, one in the spring. So he's doing a uh, million and a half a year. He's uh, doing very well. And uh, uh, it seemed like a pretty easy business, but it took him just as much effort to get it going as it did uh, Von Cook in the beginning, except he didn't have to manufacture everything. To get the money to start this thing, he, he, uh, he used to like to play the guitar. He sold his nice guitar to his dad for $700, and he launched the business for $700. Uh, paid it all back in, in three weeks. Okay, so that's J Dogs. Uh, now we're coming to our last business, which is going to be Vacation mm -hmm. Races, started by Salem Stanley. Salem asked me to see if there was anyone in the audience from Cambodia where he served his mission. Elder Stanley, if any of you. Uh, we have students from Cambodia here, but uh, okay. Class. Nonetheless, uh, Salem graduated from BYU, went to work in the investment banking area, came back to BYU for an MBA, and was getting very good instruction and had plenty of opportunities. But his passion was running. And several professors talked to me about Salem because they thought, what does he want to do running for? He, he has such a great future ahead of him. But he wants to do these races. Well, so uh, that's what he's decided to do. A uh, little background on the races. He decided that, number one, he wanted to put on half marathon races. Number two, he wanted those races to have a double, have some other reason for doing the race besides just running. So he thought about why not do the races in national parks? That sounds like a great idea. Every other race company has also thought about that same idea. And when they've approached the national parks in the United States about, about running races in the park, they found there's too much red tape and, and that they're not getting a, a kind ear from the forest uh, rangers because of all the garbage that would be strewn around and the, and the clogging of the roads in the national parks. Which So Salem, uh, Salem's skill is not in putting on races. Salem's skill is in marketing. He said to himself, we, it's a half marathon. After the race, you know, People aren't wiped out completely. They can still go do some fun things. So why don't we have them at the national parks, but why don't we have them run up to the gate of the national park and then stop? And then the next day, they can go in the national park and have a good time. So he got his destination races thing going. I want to show you a little video. Um, yes. So if I, uh, if I turn that off for a minute, and if I minimize this and go to this video, um, 
He, he attended a business plan competition in Colorado Springs about sporting businesses in the, in, in the outdoors or sporting arena. And this is the video that he showed at this business plan competition. And uh, if I can, okay. How do I bring this up if I got, uh, Richard, help me with this. Uh, I'm not being, I'm being not being I'm, I, I got it on the screen. I just need to, James is the man. James is better at this stuff. It's not in there. I know. We okay. just have to go back in here for okay. a second. Where? Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. okay. Thanks, James. Always takes a student to help us out. Uh, yes. Okay, that is uh, the video that he played at this business plan competition. And we didn't, I went with him to that competition and I didn't tell him to be nice to the judges. And he got in an argument with one of the judges. And so his business was far and away better than anything else there. But he didn't win anything because he offended the judges. <laughs> So when you go to the next business plan competition, please be careful. I mean, be on your best behavior. So um, Salem uh, this year put on three races, and now I just want to get back there. Um, uh, yes. At the bottom, go down, right, right there. Well, while, while uh, Richard brings that up, <laughs> he put on three races this year, Zions Park, uh, Rocky Mountain, and Lake Powell. Sorry. Back in the car. This next year, he's going to put on six races. He's going to put on the same three races, plus he's going to add Yellowstone National Park, uh, he's going to add Yosemite, and he's going to add uh, the Grand Canyon. Sorry, I went to just plain PowerPoint. James, we're going to we're going to work Scott you Scott today. Um, so uh, he's he's worked out nice logos. He gives uh, he gives medals. He has shirts. He has all the stuff that you have when you when you, any runners in the in the audience. Cool. Um, the exercise science majors, guys or girls, don't think of this as a potential business. Sorry. Yeah, well, that's that, that's my point. Okay. Now, here are the here are the the logos that he's got for each race, and these are the races that he's thinking about. Oh, I left off one. He's, he's going to try one back east in the uh, uh, Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Okay. 
let me now focus for just a minute on how much money it takes for you to start one of these businesses. Rockwell was started in 2003, J-Dogs 2004, and Vacation Races in 2012. It cost Rockwell $65,000 to get off, to, to buy a mole. Then he got a $100,000 loan from the city of Provo. Then when he went to Las Vegas and got all these other orders, he had to get more money. He got $250,000 from a mezzanine finance operation in the state of Utah. And two years later, he needed another half million dollars, which he picked up from one of his vendors. He has an investment in this business. He's put, they've put almost a million dollars into this business. Their sales are now $400,000 and they're doing very well, but it took a lot of money and a lot of time. Okay. I mentioned earlier, I think, that J-Dog sold his guitar, Jason sold his guitar for 700 bucks, made it all back in three weeks. Which business do you like the best? Vacation races. I've got $40,000 up here. Um, that's because he needed to hire a, a web designer and he needed to get his web page up and it's, it's the social networking that's really paid off for him. And uh, he did get some money from a, an inheritance and he put in thirty-five dollars or $40,000. And I put a plus sign there because the plus sign stands for food stamps and welfare. Because <laughs> today, uh, as of three months ago, he was still living off of food stamps and whatever he could get as not making any money because he wasn't wasn't even making any money. But now that's that's uh, and I wanted to comment on ownership for just a minute because Rockwell only 55 percent of the company is left in the hands of uh, Von Cook uh, because he had to raise so much money. Uh, Jason has 100 percent of that company that he made have he can divide that up any way he wants. And, <coughs> Vacation races, J uh, Jason uh, uh, Salem Stanley has, has got about 80% because he set aside 20% for his employees who he was going to bring on and, and help him build these races. Now, I had one other slide that I haven't been able to bring up on this at the moment. Let me, let me give you the real kicker here, which is that if you're going to do a manufacturing business, You've got to have a good six. You've got to have a good 60 days of working capital. J Dogs, well, he needs some working capital. Gets gets paid when he sells a hot dog. When Vaughn sells a window well, he sells it. Uh, he has to pay his employees and buy his materials, and he has to manufacture. Then he has to ship it. Then he has to wait at least 30 days before he gets the money back. 60 days for Vaughn Cook. Jason Edwards gets paid up front. How about vacation races? Anybody register for a race in the, in the future? There's a race this Saturday for Well Africa at uh, Gunstock Ranch. He's doing something to raise money for his investment. So that's, that's this coming Saturday. It's for a nonprofit cause, but people run races all the time. Very nice. You pay for the race well ahead of the race. Uh, um, if, if I had to put a, how much money does Jason, when does, when, when does Salem get his money? The answer is it's a minus 90 days. If, if, um, if Rockwell takes 60 days to get his money, if he gets his money when he makes a sale, he gets his money 90 days before he even has to put on the race. It's self-funding. If you have a choice, pick the one that's easiest on the financing side to really put together. So, so those are three companies. Uh, they're very good examples of what it takes to, to get a business up and running. All three of these companies are going to make their owners millionaires. And you, you don't become a millionaire by yourself. People come along with you, and so they're going to be spreading the wealth around a lot.
questions? Anybody have a thought? In the back. Do you know the, the annual profits of Rockwell? I do. Are you allowed to share that information? I had better not share that particular uh, piece of information. Um, I, I believe that if you, that, that he wouldn't mind if, oh, sorry. I don't think he would mind. Oh, the question was, what's the profitability of Rockwell? And I think uh, a reasonable answer would be his pre-tax would be 10% plus. Okay. Other thoughts on these businesses? If not, I would like to, yes, in the back. What's wrong with some businesses that maybe beyond these? What about the ones that, is there like a formula for the ones that fail? I mean, so what to avoid? If I were here at BYU Hawaii, and if I were thinking about starting a business, I would first get an idea and I would then do the business model competition or I would at least do a business model on my idea. You've talked about that there's some. Yeah, the, the idea competition is a week from now. You said some of you are in that. And then our business model is what we do next in March. Is it the business model competition? Well, business plan kind of model. There's a difference between business modeling and business planning. The difference is simply that for a business, every business has to do three things. It's got to sell something, it's got to produce what it's sold, and it's got to finance itself. Okay, well, the business model competition is about figuring out if anybody will buy the product or the idea or the service that you're selling. And so you test it before you get very far into the, into the process. Once you've decided that it's a viable product and people will actually buy it, then you go about finishing out the business plan, which means you add in how you're going to make it and how you're going to finance it. So you get those three areas in the business plan covered. I would, uh, I would start there. Uh, finding out if people would actually buy the idea by, by going through a, there's a book called Nail It and Scale It. Uh, uh, that, that's a good place to start if, if there's no class on campus like that. Again, yes. In, in your experience working with the students, why, I mean, obviously some really good ideas, good plan, didn't work, did, I mean, weren't successful, perhaps, and maybe some that were maybe mediocre were, probably were successful. What, what is it that, that, that makes it successful? What's the key? What, what, what separates those who are successful? From how do you make a, how do you get your business off the ground successfully? Uh, my comment on that is passion. Make it work. If you've proven that you can sell, if you've proven that someone will buy it or that the idea is good, uh, I believe that the key to success then is, is, is working on the idea enough to get it to market and make it work. Uh, that, that, sounds, that doesn't sound very specific, does it? But I know Jason Edwards was passionate about hot dogs. I know Salem Stanley eats and sleeps and drinks uh, races. I know that Vaughn Cook is a dedicated engineer and just loves making things. And, uh, and uh, sales is not his strong suit, but, he's, but he worked at it hard enough to. The product was good enough that it, that it almost sold itself. Um, so, uh, the, the test, uh, after, uh, after five years at BYU and mentoring students, um, I finally got to advising students if they had an idea, my comment to them was simply, go make a sale. Go sell somebody. If, if you can do that, then pr pursue the idea. Again, I hope, hope that helps. It, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but I went through these three businesses so you could see that each one of these three individuals are going to be when they have a liquidity event when they sell their business or when uh, when they bring in more investor capital they are going to be doing very very well uh, 
these are only three businesses that I that I could mention to you. I'm, I'm getting to run out of time. I want to I want to make some comments about business plan competitions because those of you who are into a business and maybe would like to uh, refine your business plan idea, there are business plan competitions around in the United States. And uh, Richard, can you help me if I if I, I need to figure out how to? Uh, you're good, Richard. Come on. Uh, there we go. This one. This is what I want. Is this up there? No. How do I get it up there? I mean, I've got it on my screen here, but uh, there are there are 97 different business plan competitions in the United States in universities every year. Many of these competitions are open to students from anywhere in the world. And so you can send your business plan into these competitions and perhaps get accepted to compete. Um, three that I like the best, um, I like the University of Oregon, their business plan competition. I liked San Diego very well. But the one I like the absolute best is Rice University in Houston, Texas. And so since I have just a few minutes, so this web page here uh, says there's $19 million in prize money available to students around uh, in business plan competitions. If I go to this map and if I click on Texas, it's going to bring up 14 events that are in Texas with $3,100,000 in prize money. And if I click right here, it will give you details on each one of those business plans. Oh, don't tell me that. I was going to bring up the Rice business plan competition. And since that didn't come up, you can go to this web page yourself and, and get that. Garrett G., the winter of 2011, as he's working on his QR code uh, app, sent his, his executive summary to the Rice Business Plan competition, and they said they would like to know more and invited him to come compete with 39 other businesses. And so he went down to Houston, Texas in April. Ah. Went down to Houston, Texas in April. And the thing that makes Rice so very, very good is that all of their judges are investors. They all have money, and they're all looking to invest in your company. So if you get invited to Rice, you are going to get all kinds of attention from potential investors. Garrett went down there and came away with money. Not actually... They didn't write him a check at the, at the competition, although he won some money. But you know his story because he was here and told you all about it. The following year, I was at the Rice competition with two other business plan uh, teams from BYU. And he had made such an impression at Rice that they mentioned him again in their, in their comments on the prior year and how well companies had done. So uh, the only limitation you have in getting to Rice is that you need on the team to have a graduate student. It doesn't have to be a graduate student from BYU Hawaii. It doesn't have to be a graduate student in, in business. It just needs to be a graduate student who has some role to play on the team. But if you're going to apply to any business plan competition, I would recommend Rice. There are many others that you can apply to. Some don't require a graduate student, some do. This web page that I just showed you will give you all the information you need about 97 different business plan competitions. Um, some BYU teams uh, have won, uh, one, one team won $150,000 in several different business plan competitions. If you win a business plan competition in the United States, should you win one, you'd be invited to the Super Bowl of business plan competitions, which is in uh, Austin, Texas. Um, that happens every April, and it's called uh, the Venture Labs Competition. And uh, so if you really want to launch the business, you have plenty of opportunity, and I would encourage you to do that. So uh, any other questions that uh, I can uh, 
uh, entertain you with. Uh, if you don't have any questions, then uh, I think I'm done. Thank you very much for letting me come.